Hi, I'm Angela Hausman of Hausman Marketing Letter. I'm here today with Mark Battaglia of ThinkVine. Um, have you ever played the game SimCity or a game, you know, a simulation game like that? Uh, my kids did. Okay, so you know how in that setting there's uh, a, an automated or an animated uh, group of people, and then you make a bunch of decisions and those people respond to your decisions, and then either good things or bad things happen. So maybe your city flourishes, or maybe your city dies out. Okay. And we've done the same thing okay. for marketers. What we've done is we've created a population, an uh, online population, that, that responds to media, uh, responds to marketing, rather, and purchases the way real people do. So you take your marketing plan, you bounce it against that simulated audience, and you see what the results are in terms of sales and ROI. Oh, very cool, very cool. So is it mostly bouncing advertising, or could you bounce anything else off of this simulated um, consumer group? Yeah, our goal is to have as many levers as a marketer could pull as part of that. So they're going to do typically media, uh, online and offline, Pricing. Um, if you're a retailer, you might be looking at things like new store openings. Um, uh, you might be looking at uh, distribution channels being in new ones. So we're really trying to address all of marketing, not just the media. Great, great. That sounds wonderful. Now, just like in real life, can I develop a target market and just test against that target market segment? Absolutely. That's one of the cool things about the way we approach it is, we're really kind of going sim by sim in terms of how do they get exposed to your media and what do they purchase. So you can build segments up based on you know household income or gender or you know proclivity big buyer versus small buyer, etc. And that's one of the advantages of our models. It really lets you target people and figure out the best way to reach them. So where did these simulated people come from? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, we build them up in, in uh, kind of three pieces. We start with, well, we'll use the U.S. as an example, but it really has to be built country by country. Um, so we go to the U.S. Census Bureau, and we get the right distribution by gender and ethnic group and, and so on. And then the next thing we do is we get information from sources like Nielsen and Arbitron and USA Touchpoints about people's media consumption habits. So now we know you know, the right distribution of people and then how much time they should spend on Facebook and watching TV and so on based on their gender and their income and so on. And then finally, the third piece of information we get is information from the company about the category that they operate in. So, you know, how, what are their sales like and what market share do they have and how often do people buy? And that's what allows us to, to do that connection between did they see your marketing and did they purchase your product or the competitors after they saw it? Okay, so this reminds me a lot of a consumer panel that we would run for a client. We'd bring in this, this group of real consumers that matched their target segment and we would test something on them. So what you're saying is this is kind of the same thing, only you're, you don't have the expense of bringing in a real target segment and these are simulated folks. Yeah, you got it exactly right. Okay. This is just like a simulated panel of consumers, not only, and in our case, not only is it about, you know, the media, but you can see the purchasing as well. So that's another advantage, right? You, instead of just asking, um, what's your opinion about this ad or that ad or, or other sorts of panel data, you're really able to look at the process from beginning to end, but perfect analogy. Okay, great, great. So how long has this business been around? The company was founded back in 2001 by a guy named Damon Ragusa. And Damon is a, a really well-respected market researcher. And he was actually doing marketing mix optimization the old-fashioned way, using regression analysis and you know making a nice presentation in the binder to his clients, as well as doing other, other sorts of, of research work. And he realized that regression, which is the way people have done marketing mix for a long time, that really didn't work as well as it used to because the marketplace is changing rapidly, consumers are more fragmented, many more marketing options, it just couldn't keep up. And so he had the idea of looking around for other methods 
to address this problem. And he went to the hard sciences where agent-based modeling, which is the thing we do, okay. has been done for a long time. It's been used in um, the cell phone industry. It's been used in the spread of diseases. It's been used in the military to do simulations. And he said, I'm going to take this framework. I'm going to apply it to a complex system marketing. And then, um, you know, and he did the math and he hired people and we built the software. And so the first software came out in 2009. And we've been in the business uh, in the form we've been in since 2009. Okay. Well, that sounds like you have a pretty good track record then. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the success stories? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with uh, major brands in all industries. About roughly a third of our customers are in the consumer packaged goods world. And then we also have um, some of our customers in retail, in banking, uh, hospitality, for-profit education, uh, telecommunications, just a wide range of, of anybody who's B2C really is a, okay. is a possible candidate. And, and so um, I can give one uh, recent example where we worked with um, a large bank and the bank was um, doing both national advertising and regional advertising to do things like sign people up for checking accounts and home loans and all the other products that you or I would use at a bank. And what we were able to do is we were able to help them look at the mix that they were doing and, and the mix of people they were reaching, especially for new accounts. Because when you sign up for a checking account at the bank, that's sort of the gateway to, you know, the home loan later or whatever, depending on your stage of life. You know, it might be a home loan if you're young or it might be a, a you know, 401k type product if you're a wealth product if you're older. And so we worked with them and we helped them find out um, what they should be doing on the national level and what they should be doing on the local level. And there were some interesting things, right? It wasn't surprising, for example, that um, you know, digital worked well for people. We all go online now, regardless of age, to make decisions. But in the local areas, things like newspaper and local radio still worked really well. And they were able to figure out, how do I use the right mix of national um, TV, um, digital, which is online for everyone, and then local things to drive people to the branches. And so that's the kind of work we do with people. We try to figure out what's the combination of things that will give you lift and improve your sales. And in that case, um, we're really, they're really happy and we're really happy in terms of the results that they're getting. On so average, we get um, a 28% increase for the uh, marketing-driven spend that or, I'm sorry for the uh, marketing driven sales that um, companies have. So every business has some sales that happen based on last year's marketing and brand recognition and so on. And then this year's budget drives some new sales. And on that new budget, we're able to get a 28% lift on average. So people really are happy with that. Oh, I would imagine they would be. I don't know any business that wouldn't be happy with that kind of return. Um, so what they're do what they're doing then if I understand this, is they're using your simulated audience and they're testing out different co campaign um, composition, different different mixes of elements within the campaign until they find the one that's optimal, and that's, then that and that's the campaign that they then go live with. Yeah, so it's um, there's kind of two ways to do it. One way is you might have a really good idea. So to your point, you might say, oh, I think we should spend 10% you know, more on digital and 10% less on print or whatever the mix is. And you can put that all in or you can have your agency put it in for you. And then you're able to see, well, let's see what those sales results of that idea are. Alternatively, you can take kind of an easy button approach. And you might say, I've got you know, these five things already committed. I've got some TV spend and some sponsorships and others. And now let the, the computer figure out for me how should I spend the rest of my budget in order to get the most sales or the highest ROI or whatever the goal is. So you can what if, and then you can do optimization either way. Okay. okay. Well, what's the setup like for this? This sounds like this is really more of an enterprise level solution. Am I right? Or is this something that small and mid-sized businesses could use too? It could be used, I would say it's sort of mid-size and up. It's typically not for small businesses. Um, there is a setup period, just like setting up a database or a business intelligence system. We are customizing this for your business. So we bring that data about demographics and we bring that data about media consumption that's already in the system. 
but we need data from you about your historical marketing, a couple years worth of info typically, and your historical sales. And we use that to make sure the model predicts accurately. So on average, when we, so we do a kind of a backward fit of, you know, how, can we show that we can fit a line to what you've done? And then we hold out six months worth of data and we prove to our customers that the model works really accurately by doing prediction of the data they've never seen before. And once, once that data is in and, and we've said, okay, now go, then we do forward-looking forecast, you know, next year's budget, next quarter's budget, et cetera. And on average, we predict uh, within 1.4% on an annual basis. So the accuracy is really high. Yeah, it sounds like it's very accurate. Tell me a little bit about the team because it sounds like you've got some really good people there. I was just looking on your website at some of the people. Yeah, it's a you know it's um, it's all software based, but it truly is a solution. It's a combination of the math that's happening underneath and the expertise of the people we have. So we've got some mathematicians in our R and D group. Um, we've got programmers, obviously. The mathematicians program too. Right. Um, and um, once the software is built, we have a team of customer success people who work with the customer to get all that data in the system and validate it to look at the results with the customers. And then typically we meet with uh, our customers either monthly or quarterly, depending on the pace they like to go at. And we look through the results and say, well, what happened in the actuals? And what did we learn? And does the model need to change? And what should you do if um, you know, your competitors had a reaction? Or maybe the, um, you know, there's been uh, economic change. There's a way you can bring that into the software as well. And so we're really working with people in addition to all the numbers, which customers can do themselves, we're supporting you with advice and guidance as well. All right. So do they, do they get reports once a month or they get reports on a more frequent basis than that uh, in between the times that they meet with the customer service person? Yeah. So as a customer or us, you can, we can run a report, uh, you know, run a new simulation and see a report anytime. There's no... Um, particular timing when it's required, but uh, most customers, when they're sending, for example, they've got some TV data, right? That comes from their agency, maybe at the end of the month, and then we take that new load of data, and now we have a chance to look at actual versus forecast. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was more referring to. Okay. We take the view of customers have four planning cycles. They have a strategy cycle. They have an annual budgeting cycle. They have mid-course corrections. That's the monthly or quarterly. And then they have ad hoc needs, right? The CFO comes down the hall and goes, bad news, your budget's cut. And so the software really is designed to work in all four of those modes so that you're constantly working in the planning and making sure that you're spending your money in the best way. Okay. So where is ThinkFine going with this? I'm sure you've got something going on back there in the R&D department. Yeah, we're always, we update the software roughly quarterly. So we, we use agile development techniques and we're always adding new functionality about once a quarter is, is our release schedule. Um, and we want to keep getting better, better at marketing mix. We want to support more types of businesses. We want to give more reports, better granular information to our customers. And that's sort of, uh, you know, the core business and things as usual. To your point earlier, though, we want to reach uh, more customers and, and customers that are not just the largest ones, but lots of people have a need to be smarter in their marketing. So we're doing some interesting work this year to create uh, a version of our product that runs a little quicker and, and requires a little less setup, but will be appealing to mid-market, uh, more appealing to mid-market and maybe even some smaller companies. And then we do work today with digital data as well. Um, but we're also working with some partners who do really detailed work on digital data. And we're figuring out how do we exchange data more quickly with them. And, and um, you know, if, and digital people work a lot faster than monthly, right? There's yeah. a lot of people are working daily. And so how do we supply more information back into the digital loop so that people can plan more effectively? So those are two initiatives um, on the product side. And then the other uh, initiative we have as a company is we've done some work in Japan and China and Canada last year, our first international work. And so we want to do more work overseas this year. We've got some opportunities in Europe and Brazil that we're about to launch on. So um, that would be another, another thing that's new for us. And um, we have a Japanese version of the product. It's pretty cool. Um, and I expect we'll do a few more uh, versions like that as we work with 
with customers around the globe this year. So existing product is mainly U.S. data that's in the existing product? It's, made, it's um, so the, the data is by country, that population data, and media consumption data, but it just so happens we've done more work in the U.S. than anywhere else. Um, but um, it was, you know, it was no problem for us to do uh, Japan or Canada or China. Um, we were able to get up and running basically at the same pace as the U.S. Yeah, it's just a function of getting that data, I guess. Right. And so every company, every country has a census. That's sort of the easy data to get your hands on. And then we've done our homework in advance for the major countries to know where, for example, if we do some business in Germany, like we think may happen soon, we already know the data sources for media consumption in Germany. Okay. Well, this sounds like a really cool tool. I, I think it is. <laughs> Obviously. But uh, yeah, our customers are receiving it really well. Um, we have a very high um, renewal rate in terms of um, you know people do business with us for years. Um, I think that's because with software and the way the world works today, people think about optimizing their marketing as an ongoing process, right? It's not just the project that you do once and right. and you stop. You know, everything's changing in the market all the time. So yeah, the, I think the a differentiator we have is is the software enables people to be agile marketers, and that's what everybody needs to be successful now. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. You have a nice day. Okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.